Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. And today, I'm reviewing injuries in the Avengers. What would happen if this was real life? Okay. I gotta say, I'm, I am a comics guy. I love comics and I, I love all the superhero movies. It was so amazing when these movies started to come out. I have not yet seen Avengers Endgame. So don't tell me what happens. I don't want any spoilers. When I watch these movies, I'm watching these movies from the perspective of somebody who loves comics, somebody who loves superheroes, somebody who loves all of the cool gadgets and the cool stuff that they can do. So I thought it would be cool to watch some of the greatest clips from the Avengers movie series and comment on these clips from the perspective of an orthopedic surgeon because these guys suffer some pretty gruesome injury. Well, no, they don't really because they're superheroes and superheroes don't really get injured. But if they were real people, what would happen? And you know, I thought it'd be cool to just check that out. Oh no! Oh yeah! And I got this idea from watching a video from Dr. Hope Sitnote. If you wanna check out the medical science behind the Hulk or Iron Man, go check out his video. The link will be in the description. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. If you are a returning member of the intern army, <laughs> you know what to do. Smash the like button and share this bad boy with a friend. That being said, let's get right to it. Okay, first scene, Loki and Thor. What happens? Boom! Loki stabs his brother, or I guess his half-brother, in the abdomen. Laceration of the internal organs, including potentially the spleen, the colon, the small bowel, or the stomach, all located on the left-hand side. If he were a normal human, he'd probably have intra-abdominal hemorrhage, peritonitis, and then have a surgical abdomen. In other words, either blood, stomach contents, or poop are gonna spill out into the intra-abdominal cavity, and that's going to be a problem. And it's probably not gonna smell very good either. Okay, number two. Captain America versus alien henchmen. Boom, off the dome. So here we have Captain America throwing his vibranium shield and smacking it off the skull of the alien henchman. Assuming that the alien henchman has the same kind of anatomy as a human, uh, i.e. his brain is inside his skull, this is going to end up with the very least a concussion, if not also a skull fracture. There may be a possibility that he may also suffer a coup and a contra coup injury and potentially something like a subdural or an arachnoid hemorrhage. But he's an alien henchman, so he's made of metal or carbonite or who knows what he's made of. He'll probably just be just fine. The next one here we have alien henchman versus Captain America. We have the alien henchman throwing some kind of grenade and Captain America being jettisoned out the window, whoosh, down several stories onto a car. In this particular case, were he just a normal human, not only would he suffer injuries from the blast itself, but he would also suffer blunt trauma injuries from the fall onto the roof of the car from a height of several stories. In either case, this is not going to be good for his intra-abdominal organs. Furthermore, as he is blown through the window, he might receive numerous cuts from the glass as he is propelled through it at a high velocity. Moreover, he would have suffered multiple fractures of long bones and potentially also the spine as well. But then again, this is Captain America and, and he's a superhero, so he can just dust it off and get back to it. This next scene, Incredible Hulk. Loki. So here we have the Incredible Hulk double fist punching Loki in the chest into a brick wall. Through a glass window, might I add. So once again, we have blunt trauma injuries from the double fist punch into the chest. But we also have blunt trauma injuries from Loki smashing into the wall. Trauma on the front, trauma on the back, but they're both at the level of the thorax, so his intrathoracic organs, that being his lungs and his heart, are taking a kicking. Not to mention, the ribs would be fractured on the front, the ribs would likely be fractured on the back, as would probably be his spine and his skull. If Loki were a human, this would be lights out. Like, lights out forever. Mm-hmm, okay, yeah. However, 
Loki is not human. Loki is a god or a demigod or, or something like that, which means he can bounce right back for this and be ready to go, which he does in the next scene. But we see here that the Hulk is having none of it because he grabs him by his foot and proceeds to smash him several times into the floor. I will not be bullied by that. Until the floor is dented. Multiple times. What? I don't think so, this would be possible were he human because if the Hulk were to grab you by your leg and swing you around once like this, I think it's probably safe to say that your leg would probably come off. Assuming that your leg didn't come off, once he smashed you into the floor hard enough for the floor to be destroyed one time, you would probably be flatter than a pancake. You would have multiple extremity and axial fractures. You would have massive internal injuries, massive internal bleeding or hemorrhage, but basically all your internal organs would be smashed, like just polarized. So this next scene is with Hawkeye. Let's see what we got. Okay, so of all the injuries I've seen so far, this is probably the most survivable. And we can see that we have Hawkeye swinging down from a rope into and through a window. And as he goes through the window feet first, we can see that nothing is really injured on him. However, were you to go through a window like that, there is the high likelihood that you might suffer some kind of laceration from the glass as it broke around you. Obviously, since he's a superhero, he doesn't really have too many cuts or injuries, and he's just laying here groaning after it appears that he's had the wind knocked out of him. So fortunately for him, these injuries didn't appear to be too bad. So in this next scene, we have the Hulk fighting multiple members of the alien army. All at once, we have multiple members of the alien army firing on the Hulk with their high energy projectile weapons. It's hard to know exactly what these weapons are based on, whether they are actually a projectile of some sort or whether they're just an energy blast. And were this a normal human and these were a solid projectile, they would have multiple gunshot wounds from a large caliber weapon. If they were on the other hand, energy blast, well then you would have multiple second and third degree burns on the outside of your body from each time that you were hit with one of these projectiles. But this is the Hulk and you can't hurt the Hulk, you just make the Hulk angry. Hulk smash! So for the next scene, you have Captain America and Thor fight the alien henchmen. And we can see Captain America being shot in the abdomen by one of these projectile weapons. And just like the Hulk in the preceding video, if this were a solid projectile and Captain America were a normal human, we could expect him to have a penetrating injury in the abdomen. If this were, on the other hand, a energy weapon, we could expect him to have second or third degree burns on his right hand side where he was struck with the weapon. And if the energy of the weapon were high enough, we could expect those burns to not only be superficial, but to continue through his abdomen, potentially out through the back. But being that he's a superhero, he's okay. Just give him one second. And Thor can help him up to fight again. All right, in this next scene, we have two Titans, the Hulk and Thanos duking it out. Boom. Ugh. Unfortunately for the Hulk, Thanos has won this fight and his finishing move is a body slam onto the pavement. Now, with a normal human being, you can expect this person to have once again, internal injuries from the blunt trauma. But not only that, you might expect them to have injuries to the long bones, the axial skeleton, and the skull as he is smashed into the ground at a high rate of speed. Of those injuries, the injury to the skull is probably the worst. Because if the computer's not working, nothing else is working. Does not compute, does not compute, does not compute. In this next scene, we have Captain America versus Ultron. And after some very impressive gymnastics, we see Captain America spin kicking his vibranium shield into Ultron's chest. Now, after he has 
struck with the shield, the shield is actually embedded into his chest wall. Were this a normal person, they would have suffered a penetrating injury to their thorax. This would have caused injury to the pulmonary cavity and the lungs inside. They would likely have multiple rib fractures and potentially a sucking chest wound if the tissue of the lung were damaged, allowing escape of air from the lungs outside of the thoracic cavity. Some of you might be asking, wouldn't the heart be injured here? Assuming that Ultron actually had a heart, I don't think the heart would be injured because the heart is much lower down in the chest cavity and the shield was embedded higher up. just below the level of the shoulder. So in this next scene, we have Guardians of the Galaxy coming upon Thor as he is floating in space with a bunch of space junk. Ah! Wipers! Wipers! Get it off! And Thor gets plastered across the front windshield of the Guardian spaceship. And lo and behold, at the last second, Thor wakes up and opens his eye. There's not really an injury here, but this is an interesting situation because in space, the temperature is astoundingly low, like something like minus 273 degrees Celsius. That's cold, like really cold, almost absolute zero cold, where no molecules move cold. The fact that Thor can actually survive out here is in and of itself amazing. But not only that, in space, there's no oxygen, like not. Not the fact that Thor could remain alive and not a frozen block of ice and even breathe out here or survive without breathing is amazing. Like he's a god, so like, what else do you expect? But it's kind of cool. So in this next scene, we have Nebula, one of Thanos' daughters. So she is being held captive in some kind of stasis ray on Thanos' ship. But just because her body is being held motionless doesn't mean that she still can't use her arms to do what she does best, and that is to assassinate. As she's being suspended in space, her attendant comes too close. Once he does so, she grabs his head, turns it around, and breaks his neck, causing a cervical fracture. If this were a human, this would cause either a rotatory subluxation of the cervical spine, those being the vertebrae of the neck, or a spinal fracture of the cervical spine between the levels of C1 to C7. In a human, this would cause either paraplegia, if it occurred at the lower levels of the cervical spine, or quadriplegia, if it occurred at the higher or mid levels of the spine. If this injury occurred above the C3 level, and there were not immediate medical assistance available, this injury would result in death because C345 keeps the diaphragm alive. And so for this last one, we have Spider-Man, Tony Stark, and the Guardians fighting Thanos. So after we have Spider-Man temporarily blinding Thanos with a spider web to the eye, we have Drax sliding behind Thanos, hamstringing him with a slice across the back of the leg at the level of the knee. Were this normal human, well, at the very least, they would be hamstrung. In other words, the hamstring tendons would be cut at the level of the knee, making it impossible for Thanos to stand. But over and above that, this injury, were it deep enough, might also sever the popliteal artery, causing an orthopedic emergency for Thanos. This might also cause an injury to the tibial nerve or the common perineal nerve behind Thanos' knee, which would also cause Thanos some problems. But either way, Thanos is gonna require some immediate orthopedic surgery within six hours or potentially suffer the loss of his extremity. He might not be able to fight as effectively as he does right now. But thankfully, Thanos is like a super strong alien and it was like a scratch, just a scratch. Just a flesh wound. So there you have it. Today I've been reviewing injuries of the Avengers. What would happen in real life? 
Now obviously, I couldn't cover all the injuries of the Avengers, or even half of some of the cool fight scenes. So if I miss your favorite scene, or your favorite injury of the Avengers, be sure to comment down below so that perhaps I can do it for a part two. Don't tell me what happens for Avengers Endgame, no spoilers. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday spoiler.